welcome, welcome. We are going to have an awesome time on this morning. I want to say happy Friday, happy Friday, or as we could say, happy Friday, yay. You know, I mean, hey, it's time to move and shake, shake and move. Uh, but I'm excited. I am really excited on this morning because today, everybody say today, we have the privilege of <laughs> sitting down with one of industry's top real estate agents. Did you know you had one of those in our office today? She has a reputation for excellence, unparalleled um, market knowledge, and client first approach. Michelle Brown has made a significant impact, not only in my life, but also in the life of real estate agents and clients that she's touched. And our conversation today is going to be aimed at to delve into the secrets behind her success, the challenge that she faced, and the future of real estate as the real estate market as it is. And so here, as we have, we have an aspiring agent, uh, whether it's an aspiring agent, a home, um, uh, someone who's been in the business a while, or someone with an interest in what's going on in the market, this interview, interview promises to be valuable, insightful for everyone that is here. So without further ado, I am going to shut up. And I am going to um, talk with one of our uh, wonderful agents. And I believe we are celebrating a birthday. So <laughs> we are celebrating with a birthday girl. So um, Michelle Brown, everybody put your hands together and welcome Michelle Brown. Yes, yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. So Didn't, how do you shut up and keep talking at the same time? Because that's what, what you just said. See, you know what, Michelle? <laughs> see, now y'all know Michelle and I have a wonderful relationship. <laughs> so I'm ready. I have my arsenal ready because she, I know I'm trying to shut up, Michelle. Come on now. I'm Come going on. to shut up and talk to <laughs> Michelle Brown. I'm, I want to see how that works. <laughs> How are you doing this wonderful day? I see your background. Great. You're out in the beautiful air on today. And how, um, how's everything going? Deck, my front deck in Redondo Beach, listening to the sound checks going on over at Beach Life. <laughs> oh, so okay. So everything is good. And it's also my son's 50th birthday and my granddaughter's fourth birthday this week. So we're having three birthday parties. Wow. So it's a lot of fun. Wow, did I did and you know staying I, the course working. Yeah. I was looking for my invitation to the birthday party. I didn't um You didn't get one. I didn't get one. Okay. Wow. I you know there's <laughs> there's I always hopeful sweet thinking. Potato pie and I don't have time. <laughs> right. I'm still waiting pie. for the sweet potato pie. All right. <laughs> Listen, Michelle, Michelle, I want to really start off by asking you and um, we're going to leave some room for some questions and answers at the end. But I wanted to ask some uh, pointed questions to you. I wanted to know uh, in two questions, how long have you been in the business, in the real estate industry? And what motivated you to become a real estate agent? All right. Well, because it's you, I'll answer that as honestly <laughs> as I can, because that's my least favorite question. But mm -hmm. I've been in the business for 42 years. Uh, I started in Dallas, Texas, and um, I started actually with a very large property management company that had a residential side of property management and a commercial side of property management, and um, and I was in the residential side as an on-site property manager. My degree actually was in nursing, uh, and I left nursing because in those days, it was mostly sh shifts. Nurses weren't as highly valued as they are today, although that we were valued, but not like being able to pick and choose your shifts and have, you know, the benefits and all the stuff that we had. So I worked, you know, three to three to 11 and then 11 to seven and seven to three. And my husband at the time was an air traffic controller and had the same hours. And it's really hard to find daycare in the middle of the night when you have toddlers and infants. So 
I left nursing. A friend of mine encouraged me to come into real estate and into property management. And I did that um, uh, up until that husband and I got divorced. It's kind of a hobby of mine. But uh, <laughs> when we got divorced, <laughs> then uh, I was still working for that management company. I was transitioning. I was a supervisor at that point. And I had some of the commercial properties as well, but I still didn't have a license. I still wasn't actively involved in the in transacting for the clients because our position at the time was to, with the commercial properties, was to help them reposition the properties to sell for value add or for a long-term hold, figure out capital expense budgets to improve the, the overall value and integrity of the property. So. I, and I worked with Roger Staubach, but a lot of people here don't even know who that is. But he was the quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys at the time. Yes. Mm -hmm. And later, when he retired, he started Staubach Company because at that time, uh, and I'm going to segue this into the future of the industry, because at that time, there were no agents that represented tenants. In commercial world, we called it tenant rep. In the residential world, we call it buyer's agents. There were no agents that did that. Everyone was a listing agent. And I think with the lawsuits that are going on, we'll probably get back to that very quickly. But we won't talk about that today. We we will talk about the reason I got my real estate license and actively started building that business is because after the divorce, that was uh, when the economy was crashing. One of those times, the economy was crashing and my house was being foreclosed on. My ex-husband and I had agreed it was time to sell. It wasn't selling. Uh, livestock wasn't selling. I raised Irish wolfhounds and Persian cats, and I had 19 of those um, because livestock wasn't selling. In Texas, it was horrible. Everybody was filing bankruptcy. And I was two days from foreclosure when we finally got an offer on the house and went into escrow. But my frustration during that time was the calls I was getting from the mortgage company and the attitude I was getting from people that I, although I worked in the industry, I didn't work that side of the industry and I didn't really know what the next step was or what to expect. And every time I would call them and it was, it was Christmas. My sister was my roommate. We were sitting on the living room floor wrapping presents for my kids and and having a, a little whiskey and the phone was ringing and it was the mortgage company, you know, dunning me for payment or telling me that I needed to go borrow the money. There's someone you need to borrow the money from and catch up on your payments. And I'm like, if I could have borrowed the money from someone, I would have by now. And we had two mortgages, one on the pool, one on the house, you know, all the true Texas divorce stuff. So, um, and I couldn't get any answers. No one could answer my questions about when it actually forecloses, how that happens. When is someone going to show up at my door, a sheriff or someone in demand that I get out with keys? And I hope it's not Christmas Day with my kids here. So two weeks before Christmas, I started working on getting my license and really digging deep. Because even when you go to real estate school, you don't learn that stuff. And so I had to just educate myself and dive deep into that. And through that experience, it just became my mission to help other people understand that and help them to avoid foreclosure and anxiety and all of the things that go along with that because it's just as Dion Sanders says it's just a, it's just a business decision yeah and and if you can keep that mindset then things will always roll a little bit smoothly for you and you don't have an anxiety attack and you don't take stuff personally I almost said the s word but uh <laughs> so so that's how I got here to answer your question so your your getting into business was really your your client approach on how you handle your business today because when you work with your clients, you work with your clients based on relationship. Is am I said how how do you? It's or based it, on the re, it's based on the relationship because there's a trust factor that underlines that, and I think my nursing degree really helped with that because. We learned how to interview patients and and know what we could do to help, but also know where we could advise them to go for help. You know, do you need a pediatrician or do you need a brain surgeon? You know, or mm. do you need a, a OBGYN? And what is the what is the pain and how do we fix it? Right. And so I, I when I looked at it with that mindset from the foreclosure I was going through. 
And then God gifted us with an offer two days before we were going to the courthouse steps and then filing the bankruptcy. It's, it was just like uh, the, the process of medicine in that people don't know what they don't know. And until we tell them what they don't know and how to fix that, then we're not servicing anybody. If we have that knowledge and we're not lifting everybody with that knowledge and helping them get to the place they want to be. My, my first assistant uh, in the business, you might remember her, Ricky, Fred, she, her name is Ricky. And she said to me after, after about seven or eight months with us, she said, I'm going to get my real estate license and, and start building that business. And you and I can start looking for a replacement for me because I just realized what we do here isn't selling homes. We don't get paid to sell homes. We sell a lot of homes. We don't get paid to sell homes. We get paid to to answer people's, give people solutions to their problems or to make their dreams come true. That's what we get paid to do. And that's what I want to do. And she went on to get her real estate license and help us do that. So, yeah, it's all about if somebody else is going through that and feeling that and they don't know where to go and I do, then it's up to me to shine the light on that path and get them there with the le the least bit of stress and anxiety as possible. Right. And you know, the interesting thing that you're talking about is because you're a proof that real estate is cyclical, meaning it, what goes around, it comes around, it comes around. Yeah. So it's important for us to... You just said I was old, didn't you? No, I did not <laughs> say that. <laughs> I did not say well, that, Michelle. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> but, throughout... but in 42 years, you see the right and you know right. and that's, that's the brilliant thing behind gary keller is that he he knows that and he keeps that in front of us all the time so we're prepared for you know the next that was the biggest lesson i had to learn too was money management because mm -hmm. um i you know i was used to living paycheck to paycheck and on a budget and all of a sudden I had more income than I had budget, and I was very excited about that <laughs> right so i had i really had to learn how to uh you know, how to manage that. And because real estate is constantly evolving, how do you ensure that you continue to learn and grow professionally? Because some people will say, okay, I've been doing it this long, I'm good. But I know you are an avid learner and uh, you grasp a hold to things that are going on in the industry. So how do you do that? How do you continue to learn and grow progressively and professionally in the business? Uh, you have to, you just have to pay attention to, to what's being offered to us as a resource. You know, it's like, because you're absolutely right. You and I both know so many agents that I don't have to do open houses anymore. I'm past that point in my career, right? What? Who has ever passed that point of meeting new people, right? And right now, open houses are not a trend, but because of the pandemic and, you know, for other reasons, people don't want a lot of strangers through their house. We don't see as many as we used to, so we find new ways to meet people. But the more knowledge that I have, then, then the better I am to represent a client, you know, and, and, and help them get to where they want to be. And that knowledge in our industry is ever changing. The laws are always changing and the processes are always changing. And if we're not in that river, if we're not stepping into that flow, then we're not servicing anybody. And I see deals go sideways or start to go sideways a lot of times because we're working with an agent on the other side that is not up to date and that mm -hmm. is not using the right forms or isn't savvy enough to know that we could talk a lot of this stuff out in 30 to 40 minutes if we get our facts right rather than have 19 counters going back and forth that just pisses everybody off you know right, right so so it's it's paying attention to what the the best thing i ever did with my career fred was get involved with the association of realtors mm. and sit on a committee most especially grievance and don't be intimidated by what looks like appears to be clicks over there or the board of directors over there walk in and talk to nikki and say what can i do what can i do to help where can i fit in they always need somebody the beauty of that is you get to know a lot of realtors and mm. when you're in an escrow with someone it goes a lot more smoothly and with a lot less stress than if it's an agent you don't know and you're trying to second guess you know why they're doing what they're doing or what they mean by what they're saying and when i pick up the phone and call 
Marie Hoffman or Sue Murphy and they answered the phone when I could call Raju and, and he would answer on the first ring. Hey, Michelle, how's your day? What's happening? Those are valuable relationships. I love realtors. I love serving as president of the Women's Council and on the South Bay Association as president because the realtors are the hardest working people that I know. And they're doing more than driving fancy cars and unlocking doors, right? We do so much more than what people right. see. And and to know that about each other and have respect and appreciate that in each other, those relationships are equally as important as our client relationships. So get, get involved in the industry. And then you know everything that's being presented that's new. Yeah, mm -hmm. when Gun, when Gov Hutchison speaks or when Simon does a contract class, you, you just can't learn enough about that stuff because it's ever changing, always evolving, and it's going to benefit yourself or, or somebody that you know down the road. Awesome. One more question, and then we're going to open up to all of the uh, the listeners on today outside of the business aspect of real estate. What do you love most about being a real estate agent and how do you, and I, how do, does it affect your um, or impact your relationship with clients? What I love most about it is our ability to, to give back and participate in the community and that feeds our pipeline. And, and again, through Simon and a book, our book club and studying under some coaching by Grant Cardone, um, I learned that there's a, there's all different levels of agents and, and all different levels of how they participate in their community. And I was one of those that was guilty of, of not going to church as often as I wanted to, or not going to a yoga class as often as I wanted to. And my children are, you know, having children. So, and they're out of state. So I don't have the athletic kids events to go to and meet people and, and through that, well, the one thing that Grant Cardone said when we were studying that is, is if you're not a successful real estate agent, it's because of obscurity, mm. plain and simple, not enough people know you. And so go to that gym class, but wear your gear, wear your ID, don't be a secret agent, you know, get involved with the Chamber of Commerce. I'm on the board of directors with the Chamber of Commerce. We have two events coming up and they need flyers distributed. My whole team is out there door knocking, distributing community information. And we're not selling ourselves. We're selling our participation in the community and that we give back. But there's always that, you know, that closing question is, uh, who do you know that you can refer to me? We don't say that. We say, how can I help you? How can I help with what's going on with this event right now? Because then people know who you are and they know your integrity and what you stand for. And they see you out in the community because you're not obscure, but you're not, you know, you're not the guy standing on the street corner twirling the sign that we buy right. real estate. So it, and those relationships is how you get, you know, to know, love and trust people and they know, love and trust you. That's my favorite thing is that we can do all that stuff without guilt because, if my, any of my team are on here this morning, especially Gabriella, she will, the first question she asks is, well, Michelle wants to know, is that a money-making activity, right? Because mm. if it's not a money-making activity, we're not allowed to do it. But there's so many things that are money-making activities and people don't realize that. And it, and it enhances my relationships and the resources that I'm able to bring to people, the people that I get to know through those relationships in the community, then I'm able... That's our statement. You know, I work with a hundred people a year. I work with a hundred people a year who are moving to the South Bay. And I may not be in transaction with those people. I may be helping them find a dentist or something else, but it's getting into the relationship with them. And that's, we can't, my son is here from Nashville and everywhere we go, we run into two or three people we meet, right? So, I mean, we, we run into two or three people that we know and we know well that are yelling across a restaurant or across a parking lot or, and that kind of recognition makes what we do a lot easier, right? Cause people will then come to you. We're not out there selling ourselves to everybody. And we do that. We do knock on doors. We do promote our clients listings and, um, and we have an eight step process for all of that. We do that stuff, but beyond that, and in answer to your question, my favorite thing is about how we have the freedom and that doesn't cost anything you know, to participate in our local organizations and give back to community. I love awesome. it. Awesome. Awesome. 
Are there any questions or comments that someone wants to? I know many uh, un, un, unvisualized himself, so he's there. <laughs> go ahead, Minnie. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm like, let's go. Uh, thanks, Fred. Uh, awesome session. Michelle Brown, birthday girl, week, month. Um, thank you for your amazing leadership. So quick question, because you only shared uh, a little bit of really what you do and the magnitude of, of what you do and how you do. And on a side note, if you guys ever um, in the South Bay area, definitely stop by when there's a team meeting or chili cook off or any kind of activity to see what this lady is really all about. Right. Um, can you touch? Thank a little you, bit? Manny. Thank you. Of course. Can you can you share a little bit more about the, the other uh, communities with Keller Williams International that you're leading as well, part of what you do on a regular basis? Um. Yeah, I, that's, yes, <laughs> we have enough time for all of that. <laughs> um, so, and, and, and many of you and Fred and a lot of others on this call are the perfect example of, of that kind of leadership, right? And, and how, as Gary Keller says, and is written in the book, you know, that, that a rising tide lifts all boats, right? And so, um, so, so we get involved with the Association of Realtors. We get involved with Keller Williams, uh, very involved with ALC and those committees, right? And then that, that I I had been at Keller. I've been at Keller Williams eighteen years, and in the first year that I was there, one of our MCAs had nominated me as a as an ambassador. It was before KW Cares, and so I was privileged enough to fly to Austin for two days during Mega Camp. I didn't know what that was at the time, and I haven't missed one since. I love Mega Camp and family reunion, but I was one of the. I was in the first group of ambassadors to actually be pinned uh, by Mo Anderson, right? And uh, and attend the ALC meetings that she ran, and when. You know, nothing is more true um, than the, that you are the best of five people around you, right? And who you surround yourself with. And when you have that kind of leadership, and, and yeah, it costs a thousand dollars, but who cares? It's probably made me a hundred thousand dollars to see what they have to say, and and they're very authentic and transparent. You don't get that in other companies. You don't get that. Um, you don't get that collaboration in other companies and 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 people working alongside you and that example that Keller Williams set for me then I then I was on the ALC I've been on the ALC for all 18 years and then for 14 years was on the regional ALC that then serves on the international ALC that writes our policies and procedures for Keller Williams and 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 just by doing that in exposing ourselves to being able to collaborate, especially with other agents. I love a couple of weeks ago, we were filming our TV show. We were in Riviera Village and we were walking through the village and uh, we had a ca the cameraman was with us because we're fi filming the TV show and we walked past one of those seaside souvenir gift shops, right? And um, they had this cute little beachy doormat that said, welcome come in and I said and we have a beach theme you know in our office and so I'm like Gabriella pick one of those up we need that for the office and she said we don't we don't need a doormat <laughs> inviting other people into the office because all day long it's like but I'm I'm I just am so honored that when someone needs our help they know they can come there you know and and we don't we don't screw around and steal clients we're there to help and just work out the collaboration that you never should turn down any business right Right. You know, there's someone in our office that knows commercial. There's someone in our office that knows residential. There's someone in our office that knows land. And then you have a broker who knows all the contracts and uh, and is willing to sit down at any time. I don't know how Simon answers so many phone calls in one day. That's just and many of you, too. I've had you interview agents for me that we've got, you know, had to hire wanted to hire and um and i don't know how you squeeze all of that in so so it's just that, that the leadership feeds leadership and once you realize the responsibility of that and then the beauty of those relationships that will always help you know you meet so many people and and you never know who you're gonna who you're gonna need i never know who i'm gonna need in an hour from now but i always know that i can tell somebody hang on i'll get back to you i know where to go get that information did that answer your question? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Anyone else, anyone else want to 
ask a question or share. We have a few more minutes and 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 I think I want to share a secret, Michelle. Um, since no one said, you know, I, I don't like dead air. So it, it, it's somebody, uh, I, go I, ahead, I, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I have a, yes. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Michelle, for this lovely uh, morning session. I would like to help you with passing flyers. How can I get in touch with you and be involved with the, um, uh, did you say the board of realtors? Uh, um, the most the of the flyers that you are pass out of, yeah. Why don't you just, uh, I'm happy to to give you um, some guidelines and where to get started. Sure. And most of that we do is with the Chambers of Commerce and local nonprofits. So get just give me a call. 310-944. Uh, one, one second, one second. 310-944-5188. 5188. I'm moving around Nine. with the sun out of me. Yeah, nine four Three, four. Yeah, three one zero five nine one. four four five one eight eight. Just ask I put Ali. It in the thank chat. you so much. It's thank in the chat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Give me a call. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. See, Michelle, the sun just decided to shine on you because <laughs> it is like... your birthday <laughs> and they want to see all of you. Now, let me, the, the little trade secret, Michelle, that many people don't know, and I think this is shared just between me and you, maybe. Is that you're also a licensed minister? Not yet, but I'm working Not on yet. it. She's working on I'm it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm working on it. Right. So that's as much as cool. I as much as I preach, I need to you know use that as a valuable resource too. Definitely, to you need to you need to come over and and assist me over at Southside. You know, you know, at my church. So <laughs> I look forward to doing that. It's um. like. That at some point in your life, and and it happens at different times for all of us. I think we realize that we're not in this alone, you know. Right. And 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 the moment that I had the revelation that I needed to add that to more of that to my life is the moment that I called you and said, "Hey, Fred, I need to do this." So, uh, yeah, I'm working on it, but I'm not licensed yet. But I'll get there. Awesome, Thanks. awesome, yeah. Gary, just, Gary. Yes, I want to make a quick comment. Uh, can't really show myself, but that's all right. Um, you know, most people will tell me, you know, about how good you are here and there. But I, I just want to make a comment about Michelle Brown, um, a phenomenal, phenomenal individual. Uh, a great person uh, who fights for uh, the good of people. I, I remember when I first started with PW. And going back to when uh, my daughter had an accident, uh, the person that came to me and say, uh, Gary, uh, look, KW have things, uh, ways to help you out. And I was very reluctant to, because I don't really like anybody helping me out uh, in, you know, and she just fought with me and said, no, here's this form. You got to fill this thing out. Uh, KW Cares will help you. Uh, and, you know, uh, that's pretty deep. That's pretty deep. It's, it's, you know, you just see, I'm still very new in the business at that time. And this lady just come and and say the cause to encourage you to, to get help. I, I think that goes a long way than just being an agent, being a uh, uh, a friend, uh, being just a woman of culture. So I just want to express that and uh, let you guys know. Uh, I mean, I think we all kind of know that about her. She's everybody's uh, aunt and and mom or whatever you can call it, right? So just just want to let let it let it be known. We appreciate you. Thanks, Gary. I thank you so much. Um, Again, that's that's a reflection of Keller Williams and the leadership and and allowing yourself to receive 
uh, that the guidance like that. And you were beyond reluctant, <laughs> but part of that, it was just what you were, the despair that you were going through, you know, in, in your own, own heart, you and Laddie and the not knowing where the next turn in the road was going to come. And, and it's in moments like that. It's what many was referring to. It's in moments like that, that, that we, we need somebody else to take the wheel. Right. And, and if I had not, you know, if I had not been fortunate enough to have been nominated as an ambassador and not gone to that mega camp and not met Mo Anderson and not know that those grants are available. And that's how KW Cares came to be. And this was before KW Cares. If I had not known about that, then I would not have been able to put that application in front of you and and to know, you know, what. And, and that's the beauty of Keller Williams. And that's where we rally and we collaborate and we take care. Uh, uh, it's just like, you know, my assistant, Ricky, when she um, had her baby and, and had a brain aneurysm and was paralyzed. Right. And and those people in that original ALC and the ALCs that we've worked with all along step up because they know what resources are available to us. And, and Sue Weckerly and Maureen Lee and... And Nick, Sue's husband, Nick, and I can't even remember everybody involved at that time that knew that we had to raise money too, uh, to show KW Corporate that as a market center, you know, that we we were helping too. And it was at Christmas, Gary, you know, we bought all those little angel ornaments and uh, and we wrote Lizzie's name on the bottom of them and we stood out in front of our office on Avenue I during the Christmas stroll that the Redondo Beach Chamber has, and we sold those ornaments and all the proceeds went to to help Gary's family through that time. But it also supported that application getting accepted and um, and the money that came through the grant. So it was an honor and a pleasure to do that. And um, and then to to see you come past your stubbornness a little bit, but uh, <laughs> but thank you for that. It wasn't just me. It took it was the whole team. And, and it is it is KW culture. Yeah. You know, Michelle, I really want to thank you for being you. I think you are the epitome of making Keller. I'm going to say Keller Williams South Bay, but because we have all Keller Williams, you make Keller Williams a place called home. You make us comfortable. You are that, as we say, that comfort food. So I appreciate you the relationship that we've had. And I hope that this um, uh, mindset, producer's mindset was valuable to those that were here. I want to thank you for accepting my uh, invitation. Um, you are wonderful. And I'm still waiting thank on my you. sweet potato pie. I'm, <laughs> I'm still. <laughs> You'll get it. You'll get it. You'll get it. Yeah, it's coming. Thank you. It's the Thank anticipation you. that helps. You yes, know? I know that anticipation. It's coming. <laughs> Minnie, I'm going to share it with you. I, I guarantee you when I get it, I'm going <laughs> to run to you and I'm going to say, Minnie, here it is, the value sweet potato pie, you know. <laughs> <laughs> But I want to thank you for taking time out of your morning to share with those that are on the live. I want to thank you all that came and sacrificed your time on this morning. And I hope it was valuable to you, um, the experience, the shared experience that Michelle shared. And Michelle, Michelle is an open office. Now, understand me, not an open office that you can go in and whatever you want to, but make sure... <laughs> She is still a professional. She said she is still doing her business. So make sure you are respectful of that. But thank you, Michelle. I appreciate you. I thank love you. Thank you, Fred. This is and fun. And you have thank a you. wonderful, wonderful birthday weekend with you, your son, your grandbabies, your daughter-in-law, your husband. You guys have an <laughs> awesome time, okay? I smell the bacon cooking, so uh -oh. I'm going to breakfast. <laughs> uh oh All right. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys so thank much. Thank you, Minnie. Thank you, guys. Awesome session. Thank you, Michelle. Fred, thank you as always. Okay, thank you. You all take care. Have a great day and weekend. Make it happen. All yeah. right. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>